Good morning, Strasburg United Methodist Church, and welcome to worship. Today is July 4th, 2021, and no matter where you are, no matter whether you are a member of the United Methodist Church or not, we are happy that you have joined us today for this time of worship. I have a few announcements for our congregation and for those who, are may, who may be local. First, we are continuing with our Revelation Bible study on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. at the Strasburg Town Park. We are meeting at the Rotary Shelter next to the playground, and everybody is welcome. My father-in-law, a retired Methodist minister, is uh, teaching a good class, um, looking at some of the history, but also uh, going into some of the scriptural uh, analysis of that wonderful text. Secondly, we are collecting uh, some items for Compassion Cupboard, our local food bank. We are collecting laundry detergent and applesauce. And we're asking that you bring those little plastic individually wrapped cups of applesauce that you find in a six pack and uh, instead of giving us any glass jars. Finally, our newsletter for July is going to be a little delayed. We've had uh, a lot of things been happening in the office. We've actually made a hire for our church office administrator. And that person will be working Monday through Thursday uh, from in the morning. So feel free to give, um, give her a call anytime. Her name is Jessica, and we'll have more information about her in our newsletter. We also have a church council meeting and a trustees meeting this week that we are trying to uh, put together our plan for the fall when it comes to Sunday school and church. And all that information will also be in our newsletter, which should come out by the middle of July. And this will be a combined newsletter for July and August. That's about it for me when it comes to announcements, so I ask you now to bow your head with me and pray. God the Creator, God of the cross, you show your power in whirling galaxies and unseen forces. You show your love in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Drive out the evils that threaten to break our spirits and help us to rely on your all-sufficient grace. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Rich Gersh and I have prepared some music today. I hope you enjoy our selections. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. Cause I know it's true It satisfies my longing As nothing else could do I love to tell the story T'will be my theme and glory To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story, for wonderful it seems. Then all the golden fancies, in all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me. And that is just the reason. I tell it now to thee I love to tell the story T'will be my theme and glory To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story Tis pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet I love to tell the story for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word I love Tell the story, twill be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love.
you join me in singing the hymn, Christ for the World We Sing. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring. With loving zeal, the poor and them that mourn, the faint and overborn, sin sick and sorrow mourn for Christ to heal. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring. With fervent prayer, the wayward and the lost, by restless passions tossed, redeemed at Calvary's cost from dark despair. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring. With one accord, with us the work to share, with us reproach to dare, with us the cross to bear for Christ our Lord. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring. With joyful song, the newborn souls whose days reclaimed from error's ways, inspired with hope and praise to Christ belong. I, that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt. And who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still you hear me when I'm calling, Lord you catch me when I'm falling. You told me who I am. I am yours And who am I That the eyes that see my sin Would look on me with love And watch me rise again And who am I That the voice that calmed the sea Would call out through the rain And calm the storm in me not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you told me who I am I am yours I am a flower quickly fading Here today and gone tomorrow A wave tossed in the ocean A vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling You've told me who I am I am yours It is now time for us to offer a prayer of thanksgiving for all the many gifts that God has given us. Will you pray with me now? Gracious God, we thank you for the suffering love of Jesus Christ and for your presence with us in times of joy and of sorrow, sickness and health, faithfulness and brokenness. 
We bring these offerings as signs of our gratitude and as tools in the ministry of the church. Use them and us to make known the good news of your healing love and renewing power. In the name of Jesus, amen. time for our prayers of the people. Will you pray with me now? God of heaven and earth, creator of all things seen and unseen, we join with the church through all ages, praying that you cast out all evil and renew the face of the whole creation. Grant wisdom and courage to the political leaders so they enact in every nation for the common good, the justice you command. Grant intelligence and generosity to leaders of business and industry so that they provide dignity and safety for every person and household on the planet. Grant imagination and passion to educators and artists so that they, that they give clear guidance and true vision, enabling us to praise you for the wonder and beauty of your world. Grant compassion and skill to healers and caregivers so that the sick and suffering may know your touch as a foreshadowing of the resurrection. Lord, on this Independence Day, we remember those who have gone before us, lifting up the freedoms we now hold dear. Be with our nation, its leaders, its citizens, and its sojourners, and enable us to celebrate also the freedom you give us through Jesus Christ. We pray this day for all who are suffering at the hands of the violent and power-hungry, the greedy and the malicious, the ignorant and the misguided, and the powers of evil beyond human control. May each one who is afflicted find comfort in your faith, hope, and love to enable them to overcome. Empower your church with the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel with authority, for not even the gates of hell can withstand the grace of Jesus Christ. Complete the renewal you began in raising Jesus from the dead. Then, with all creation, shout with us, Hallelujah. Amen. Let us now join in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you join with me now in our prayer for illumination as we ready our hearts to hear scripture today? God of courage, be in our speaking. Be also in our listening and speak to our soul's deep understanding. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard them were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, 
but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Graduation ceremonies at large universities are rarely quiet events. And this is especially true at my alma mater, Emory University. Throughout the speeches, a dull roar hovers above the students and spectators as each complains about the heat or the boring speaker or about the restaurant the families are going to escape to after the ceremony is over. Tom Long, a professor at Candler School of Theology at Emory University, remembers one graduation ceremony where a hush fell over the crowd of 2,000 graduates, their friends, and their families. The speaker for that graduation ceremony was receiving an honorary doctorate. But of all those honored that day, from undergraduates to those receiving their doctorates, he was the least educated. Now, Hugh Thompson did not finish college, choosing instead to enlist in the Army where he became a helicopter pilot. On March 16, 1968, he was flying a routine patrol in Vietnam when he happened to fly over a village of Mai Lai, just as American troops under the command of Lieutenant William Calley were slaughtering dozens of unarmed villagers, old men, women, and children. Thompson set his helicopter down between the troops and the remaining civilians. He ordered his gunners to train the helicopter guns on the American soldiers, and he ordered the gunmen to stop killing the villagers. Hugh Thompson's actions saved the lives of dozens of people. Now, in the aftermath of that event, Hugh was almost court-martialed. But 30 years later, the Army awarded him the Soldier's Medal. As he stood at the microphone, the rowdy student body grew still. The murmurs that were over the crowds began to hush. And then Thompson talked about his faith, simple words, speaking of what his parents taught him as a child. And he said, they taught me do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, the students were amazed at these words of Jesus, words from Sunday school, words from worship, words of Christian testimony. And they leapt to their feet and gave him a standing ovation. The goal of the life we lead as Christians is to reflect Christ in all that we say and do. What was so clear about Hugh Thompson was that the words he internalized as a child meant more than the military structure that he was a part of at that time. It was important for him to stop an injustice that he was seeing, even if it meant a potential court-martial. Now, in hindsight, we see his action for what it is, a courageous action protecting women, children, and the elderly. But at that time, his actions were controversial, if not dangerous. The My Lai Massacre, as it became known, was an embarrassment to the military establishment. And it really was a watershed moment for the anti-war movement to mobilize against the Vietnam War. Hugh Thompson did not think about all of those repercussions that day. All he did was see a problem, and he reacted. Now, it's not easy to reflect Christ in all that we say and do. One time, as I was trying to coax a recalcitrant weed whacker into starting, I found myself becoming more and more frustrated with each pull of the starter cord. Fifteen minutes of pulling, having it start and then die, elicited within me words that I normally do not even think about. Ten minutes later, those words were being spoken aloud as I experienced the frustration over this non-starting piece of machinery. And I paused to reflect on my words and actions, mainly because my arm was so tired. But as I waited to try again on the non-functioning piece of equipment, I realized that if I can get so bent out of shape when a tool doesn't work, what does that say about my patience with people who act and believe in ways different than my own? What happens when I am confronted with difference in people who work for purposes other than my own? 
I know that over the last year and a half, I've had to change my way of communicating. Now, every Friday or Saturday, I sit in front of a camera in the fellowship hall, preaching to a lens and imagining who might watch me. And then a day or two later, I, I need to preach that same message to a group of people who up until now have had half their face covered with a mask. Do you know how hard it is to gauge emotional reactions by just looking at somebody's eyebrows? I don't know if what I say is making any impact, or if they are words that just flow through the air and across the internet and are soon forgotten. But I know that my role as a pastor here at Strasburg United Methodist Church is to inspire, to comfort, to teach, and to be a prophet. But it's been hard when we've been limiting ourselves to just a few minutes in the sanctuary each week. In addition to the challenges of connecting to our local church in this time and place, I'm also very much aware of the challenges of the greater Christian movement in American culture. There was a recent survey that came out from Pew Research that said one in four adults now say they are non-religious. And it's the highest amount of people saying that since surveys began in the mid 20th century. A new study came out this year claiming that 80% of young adults under the age of 30 have never been to a worship service, let alone know what they believe about God. So this church experience that I have, this church I know, this Christian ethos instilled in me as a child is not something that many others even know exists, especially people my age and younger. And you know what? That scares me. Because what happens when our understanding that Jesus loves me, this I know, is no longer a commonly held belief. What happens when the idea of a purpose in life greater than us is no longer the dominant belief of most people in our communities? What happens when we no longer know the story of the Good Samaritan or the Prodigal Son? What happens in our modern wars when a group of soldiers decide to shoot every villager because they are frustrated that they cannot find the real enemy. What Hugh Thompson will land his helicopter in the midst of that village to stop the immoral behavior because his faith has a higher importance than military law? What happens when the Christians of the world speak with conviction about the care for the widow and the orphan and the poor but no one else understands because their mindset is so different. What happens when our assumptions about right and wrong become the minority opinion because others have a different morality and ethical standard? When my weed whacker did not start when I wanted it to, when it wouldn't bend to my will, I certainly cursed it. But you know what? All of the cursing in the world didn't help. And I think if we begin to curse those who are different than us, we will discover that it won't be helpful either. And you see, that's when I turn to scripture. We have two stories in our gospel lesson today. Last week, we saw the miracles of Jesus healing the bleeding woman and raising a little girl from the dead. Immediately after those events, Jesus heads home, and we discover that Jesus can do no deeds of power. Jesus experiences failure. The people see him as Mary's son. They see him as the carpenter. They have no faith in Jesus, the teacher. But even at the depth of failure, of returning home and having nobody believe you, Jesus still sends out the 12 to do deeds of power and to share a message of repentance. So as we transition from a story of going home, we have Jesus sending his disciples out. What we learn from this scripture is that our efforts are not always going to work. Sometimes we will fail. Sometimes we will have to shake the dust off our feet and move on to better opportunities where our words and actions can make a difference. Now, looking at the scripture, we could have seen Jesus become bitter. He could have cursed his hometown. But instead, he challenged his followers to continue sharing the message of repentance, forgiveness, and salvation. And maybe that's what we need to be doing as a church here in our own community. 
Now, there are some of you who've been here a long time, and many of you have friends and family that you've tried to get to go to church. Some of you have seen loved ones make mistakes and just never change. And maybe you've even tried to tell your story about why you go to church and why you believe, only to realize that they have tuned you out once you said the name Jesus. And maybe in your hearts and in your head, you've given up. And maybe some of you have cursed. Maybe some of you have despaired. But I challenge you to be like Jesus and to never give up. You see, church is not just something we go to on Sundays. Church is the place where we gather together as a community to be inspired and to share the life-giving and life-changing message of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Church is the place where we teach the young to love others, not just their family. And we learn that God loves all people, no matter race, nationality, language, status, or gender. Church is the place where we learn that different perspectives about politics should not lead to division, because in the end, we are united in our love of God, our Savior, despite our differences. I am distressed at the world we live in. I'm distressed at the fact that we separate people into winners and losers, and that the language of division has overtaken many in the media, as well as our politicians, and now even our families. I also mourn false notions of civility that seek to shame those who speak out loud. We need to hear the arguments so that we understand what is right and wrong and allow our minds to be changed. I grew up in a church where people could argue, but still love each other at the end of the day. It's a value that I hold and a value that I wish I could share with those who I come in contact with in my work and in my life. Jesus could have given up after he returned home and was unable to do miracles. The disciples could have given up after Jesus was crucified. Chief Warrant Officer Hugh Thompson could have turned his head and ignored the atrocities happening below him and chalked it up to just being in a war. But we know that Jesus continued healing and teaching. We know the disciples formed the church. And Hugh Thompson saved who he could. And when we are faced with a changing world and the challenges of teaching the Christian message to a world less and less inclined to hear it, I urge you to never give up. Get up from the pews. Get up from your seat. Go out into the world and preach, not just with your words, but with your actions as you live out the faith that you have learned in these four walls of a church and even in this borderless space called the internet. Love your neighbor, be compassionate, act with kindness, and be bold in what you believe. I challenge you to be full of faith, and when you encounter those who can't or won't hear you, just shake off the dust of your feet and continue to be a Christian in your actions and your words and reach out to all those who will hear. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace.